Thank you, uh, Commander. It's actually it's great to be out here. There's no better place to be on Memorial Day. Although, the last time I spoke here, it also rained. So you may not want to invite me back for a while, but uh, this is a great community uh, that I like to visit because if you love your veterans, and that's portrayed by the attendants here, by the, the VA center that we have, and the patriotic feeling that's always abounds when I come to Danville and Vermillion County in this area. So again, thank you for the invitation. I also want to thank Post 210 for the invitation, but also they sent my wife a basket of flowers uh, to, to thank me for coming because I live about three hours away. So to get up here in time, it's a, it kind of takes a whole day commitment, but I think in thanking my wife for letting me come, I appreciate that. And that was well thought, and she uh, wanted to send her thanks. I want to start, and I'll try to be quick, although it may clear up. We might be able to dry up by the time we're done. Uh, Matthew 24, 6 says, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. As you know, and as we know, there will always be wars and rumors of wars. Hence the need for a standing military. Hence the need of our Army Reserves, military reservists, and our National Guard. And with these folks who volunteer to serve, we try not to be troubled, as the Bible says. But we live in very challenging and dangerous times. But the veterans here today, they've already gone through very trying and dangerous times. And so the importance of remembering those who've gone before us is to help train future generations to answer the call to serve. And that's what we do today by giving respect to those who have fallen. And that's what we do when we respect those who are still veterans and have served. And that's what we do when we respect our flag and giving its proper due. Because our flag represents those who serve and have paid the full measure of sacrifice for this country. We rally around our flag, our banner, the Star Spangled Banner, Old Glory, or the Stars and Stripes, remembering that the 13 stripes represent our heritage, the 13 original col colonies. The blue is a canton or a field, and the stars are the states. It's like when you look at the blue and the stars, think of a new galaxy that was formed. A galaxy that represents our values, freedom, democracy, the rule of law. That's the symbol of the, what our nation sends not to just our own people, but to the world as a whole. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what our flag represents when we see it and we respect it. That's what our veterans have answered the call to serve. And that's why those who have borne the full cost of battle, that's why we respect them today. Today is Memorial Day. When we pause specifically to remember those who have fallen in defense of our great country. I also like to think many times on John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, that one lays down his life for his friend. Now, I think some of us can remember, and a lot of the veterans here know that part of a, a battle and fighting and surviving is to be with your buddy, your foxhole buddy, who have you eaten with, you've slept with, you've gone through harsh terrain with, you you become a band of brothers. But just think what else 
our military does, and these folks who have borne the full price. They have laid down their life for someone they don't know. And you can look to all the campaigns in the past and the campaigns of the present and probably the campaigns of the future and look at the United States where we have answered the call to serve, gone to faraway places to save people we don't know and, and having them pay that full sacrifice. The world is in a great turmoil, as we all know. We follow world events more closely now than I think we've had in, in many years. Whether it's Islamic radicalism and ISIS, whether it's Iran and its nuclear buildup, or whether it's emerging China and the South China Sea, or whether it's a re-emerged powerful Russia that's threatening and actually occupying parts of Eastern Europe. I found in my time in Washington and internationally is that if the U.S. does not lead, the world has no leadership. And the reason why people trust us to lead is because of our flag and the canton and the galaxy and the stars. Oh, the world knows that we hold truce to be self-evident that all men are created equal. We're willing to sacrifice our young and men and women in defense of those freedoms. And again, if the world in this time and era can't rely on the United States, there's no one left for them to rely upon. We ask your continued support and prayer for those who we've elected into office, who are making tough decisions in the world that we live in today. We thank our veterans for answering the call to serve. We thank them for the example they showed to our young men and women who in turn, because there will always be wars, there will always be rumors of wars, we will constantly need young men and women to answer the call to serve. We continue to tell a great story by your presence here today, remembering those who have fallen and thanking our veterans who have served. We need to continue to do this, continue to pray for our country. May God bless you all, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you.